Hi everybody, thought I'd do a video here on how to install an F18A VGA enhancer board inside a Tex Instruments TI-9948 computer. Now this enhancer board will work obviously in the Tex Instruments TI-994A, but it's also designed for the ColecoVision uh, MSX computers. Um, it's basically because they use the same video chip as the TI. Now what I have here is a computer I got off of eBay and uh, I'm doing a video this way with more uh, still pictures than an actual video. It was just too difficult uh, to try and hold the camera while I'm doing all this. So this computer is obviously a TI-994A computer system. Uh, very good looking computer for its time even today. Uh, the chrome on there looks great. Now you can see here uh, this is coming through the uh, RF board here. Um, there is a uh, uh, standard composite out. Uh, pitch is a little bit better, but um, you can kind of get a, a gist of what the quality is on, on the picture here. You can still see the text, but it's, you know, a lot of lines. It's not the best quality. So when you open up your TI, it's relatively easy. You have uh, four screws here on the front, and there's three on the back, and uh, the bottom actually lifts off. Um, <coughs> you pull out the, uh, the main board here. This is your main motherboard here power supply and this is where your keyboard would be. So when you get your uh, motherboard out, basically there's three screws. There's one screw here and then one here and here that have to be removed. Once you do that, there's a cover clip here and a cover clip here that just pop right off. They slide off very easily. And here's your exposed main board. This is your uh, 16K of uh, video RAM which is also the main memory of the entire computer. So if you see something weird with your display, it's either one of these chips has gone bad or your TIV uh, video display processor, which is right here. Uh, this white stuff on here is actually a um, uh, heat transfer paste. And there's actually a heat sink on here to try and keep it cool. Here is your 16-bit CPU, uh, the very first home computer to uh, have one. And uh, here's your sound uh, chip and your GROMs cartridge port, expansion port, uh, cassette interface, video and audio out, and this will still be using for the audio out, and your joystick port over here, and power cable. Here is the F18A. Um, it's a fully programmable gate array, uh, daughter board. It's a direct replacement, so once you carefully remove your uh, video display processor, this little guy is going to sit right in here, and this cable will have to come out to the uh, external side of the cage, of the case. So you can see it just slides right in, pops right in. There are uh, jumpers here for different settings if you want to have scan lines and stuff like that, uh, but I don't. I want to have the best picture I can get. And I just hooked up the cable here to do a quick test and just see how the display was. Um, again here, just put the machine together relatively quickly just to see if everything's working okay. I don't recommend everyone doing this. It's very easy to short uh, a power uh, over here, and that's 18 volts coming in, uh, or any one of these devices could short out, but um, I'm a risk taker. Um, here's the original video display chip over here. And you can see, now these lines see here is actually the screen, I actually replaced the monitor, um, but the picture quality is, all, is definitely better. Um, when you see the end of the instructions, you'll see a much better picture in here. But this is just a quick uh, show of Miss Pac Man here. Now, all these artifacts, again, is due to this particular monitor, uh, which I end up replacing. Now, the next thing you need to do, once you actually put the device in the computer, you need to cut out your uh, hole for the wire to come out. Now, I did one make one mistake, because this looked a little bit similar to this. You do have to remove the heat sink, which are these two screws. I would recommend waiting until you cut your hole to take them out, because I actually cut my first hole here, not paying attention to where the cartridge slot was. So, you'll see two cut holes, one here and one here. My boo-boo. So here is the uh, heat sink for the video display processor. Uh, when you're done making your cut, this does have to come out. It can't stay in here when you have the F18A installed. And you can see it here is removed very easy with two screws. So here's my uh, first cut hole. I put electrical tape here. I, I did uh, sand down the end to make sure there wasn't any jagged edges to cut the cable. But uh, I put electrical tape anyway, but it didn't really matter because this was the wrong spot. This is where you want to come out. Your video display. F18A is here, and the cable is going to come out right here. So again, you cut your hole. Uh, I did sand around the edges, and I did put electrical tape 
around it just to make sure there's no way for the wire to fray uh, once you do put it in. Um, but I guess an extra vent hole won't hurt anything. So you can see here again the uh, display processor is in, inside. In this cable, I'm going to pull this jack off in the next picture and feed it in through the top of the cage. So you can see the cable is pulled off in here. And you want to make sure when on the cable there's a notch. The notch sits right on this chip. You don't want the notch on top. That means the cable is backwards. Here's another shot of just the uh, way I'm going to feed the wire in. And here it is. So the VJ connector is here and it's fed the cable right down into here. And you can see where it sits in. Again, there's a notch on this cable. The notch has to be on the chip, on the bottom, not the top. Once this is in place, this sits in really tight. Uh, nothing else holds it in place. It's just time to close this back up carefully. Uh, make, be sure that um, your cable's nice and, and flat. You're not bending it in any way. That can cause a short in any way. Just be very careful closing it up. Now you can see here, when I put it in originally, this is where it would have come out. So technically, I could have left this one uh, here and just fed it this way. But I wanted to have it as close to uh, the audio out as I could. So as much as I hated to cut another hole, I ended up cutting another hole. And it does sit in here much better, I think. And I just put a piece of electrical tape on here just for strain relief. Probably doesn't really need it, but doesn't hurt. So the cable is folded here, uh, maybe an inch. It comes right back out. And now it's sitting right by the old video port. Now the video port in here will be disabled. The F18A does not display out the uh, video at all, but we do get the audio from here. And again, all of this built-in 16K uh, of memory is bypassed. It uses its own internal memory. So if you have a bad video display processor or bad RAM, um, this is a perfect solution. Pop this in, no soldering, and you're going to fix your computer real easy. Let me go back to this one slide for one second so you can see you got to put your two screws back in here, your one clip-on plate, your second clip-on plate, your other screw here. That's it. Once you do that, your case is, is closed again. Now, this is what comes with the F18A. It's a regular back plate for a PC. What I decided to do is simply to cut this section off here and cut this section off here. Now, there's a lip up here, and it's really kind of cool. This lip actually fits perfectly in the back of the TI underneath the chrome and the plastic. It actually sits right in there really well. So here I did cut off and sanded it, and cut off and sanded it on this side as well. And you can see there's a lip here, but this lip goes right inside this groove here. So it actually holds this uh, spot in place. Now, uh, what I did, I used a Dremel tool, and I just cut straight across here so I know how big I had to cut. I cut here and here, and then I filed them out. The one mistake I made, uh, again, was right here. The Dremel tool has a, has a knob that sticks a little bit below it, and I wasn't paying attention, and actually kind of messed up the plastic here. I'm a little disappointed I did that, but um, stuff happens. So you can see the plate again from another angle. This groove spot sits right on top of these here, uh, which is really kind of cool. And you can see here the Dremel tool kind of bit into that. A little disappointed. Uh, maybe I'll put a little sticker on here saying F18A enhanced to cover that up. That, that really does bug me that I did that. Um, but again, things happen. So what I originally was going to do, I wanted the uh, connector to stick out, and the VJ connector does slide right through here, but I'll show you in a minute this is not the best solution. It's really going to have to be enough to cut this down lower and mount this directly to the, uh, the clip that's going to be on here, and I'll show you why in a minute. But it would have been nice if I could have done it this way. Just another angle showing how it slid it through the slot. And you can see it, it fit really well. The problem is that the two screws, which you can see in the foreground here, uh, background, um, when you put these screws in, they're not long enough. So it's not able to grip on to the other end to hold it in place. So um, I'm going to have to cut this out really and sit this better. So right now the only thing holding this on is, is just it's, it's uh, holding on to the plastic. It's nice and snug, but it's not proper. This really needs to have the two clips holding it in place. Other people have I'll put a new screw hole here and a new screw hole here to uh, mount it, and it looks like that might be the way it has to go. Um, again, unless I can find some longer screws, which is I don't think I'm going to find. Um, if I can, that's what I'll end up doing. If not, um, I'm going to have to mount this plate with two extra screws on it. And just showing you again how it sits in, uh, it's on the top half, 
Uh, the bottom half, obviously, the motherboard sits in here, so it would be way too tight to put it in. But up here, there's tons of room. Uh, so you can really put it anywhere up here. Uh, I simply chose to put it as close to the cable here out to keep both the uh, audio and video on the same side. And now just basically put your screws back in place, power supply, keyboard all back in place, nice and neat as you can. And again, put in your three screws in the back, four screws in front. And uh, you can see it's not flush as well. So if this was on the other side of the plastic, if I cut this out a little bit more so this can sit through easier, this will be flush. And right now it's not flush. And again, my, my badge of honor, hate that. But I'll figure something out to cover that up. And that's it. So the computer looks exactly the same on the outside. But you now have your VGA connector in the back, audio out. Now some people pull this out entirely. I've seen people take this and put this in here. Then you have this lower half that's exposed. I didn't like that. Or they pull this out and uh, cover it and put a regular phono jack on here, which I might do. But for right now, I have a cable here and I can get audio from here. So there's no point in me doing it at this point. So you can see here's your VGA out. And this is an audio and uh, composite out, but composite is completely disabled. The only thing coming out of here now is the audio. And uh, again, we have our old display processor, computer, power supply, uh, you're out. Uh, extra power supply, you never have too many of those. Speed synthesizer. And we put in Miss Pac Man again just to see how the video is going to look. You can see already just the main screen, even on the monitor before, um, that wasn't displaying too great. Uh, once everything's put up and sealed and, and the RF shield's in place, uh, not interfering with that uh, cable. You can see already the picture quality is just phenomenal. Now also in addition to um, giving the VJ out, uh, having its own internal memory, so if you have a bad video display chip or bad RAM, uh, it bypasses that, but there's also new screen modes. Um, you can do 80 column screen modes, and there's lots of other enhanced video modes and some games like TI Scramble, which is amazing. Uh, I don't have it yet, but Vectrex Roly uh, has a video on that. Um, gives your TI a lot more uh, colors and enhanced video modes, which is uh, something that's pretty neat. And you can see now Miss Pac-Man again, even there's no lines. Everything here is really, really good. And here's the game again. And uh, I'll zoom in a little bit here. You can see there's no artifacts really. You can see it kind of close. But again, this is the screen itself. But uh, I can tell you firsthand that uh, it's night and day. The picture is really, really good. And that's it, guys. So I hope. Uh, this video uh, tutorial kind of helped you get out and how to install an F18A if you are all interested in doing so. Uh, I will be adding one to my ColecoVision. I already have the F18A for that. Uh, the only difference is the F18A in the ColecoVision. Uh, the pins on the actual board are longer. And you do have to desolder, unlike the TI in the ColecoVision, you have to desolder the old uh, video processor and put in a, uh, a socket just to make it easier to get the board out if you have to do any updates to it. But I'll do a uh, tutorial on that one uh, next time. But again, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And leave any comments down below. Uh, everyone, hope you have a great day, and thanks for watching.